treat cranial spinal axis, you're going to start from the head. The first thing you want to do when you get the patient on the table is get them in position, of course. You potentially are going to have lateral leveling marks on the patient. Get them level. We're not concerned about a bunch of in and out and stuff like this. We're just going to get them leveled out all the way along the torso and the hip so that all of this is kind of in line with itself. Next, you're going to do more ballparking. None of this is even aligning to anything except for ballpark. You want to get all of your posterior marks from the head all the way to the butt in line with each other. You gotta do this first because after you treat the cranial field, you can't move the patient again. If you treat the cranial field and then discover that they're crooked, you're screwed. You don't want to move the patient ever again after treating even one of these fields. Get the patient perfectly straight all the way through. If they're overweight in the, pa in the past, I have had to actually take x-rays to make sure the spine's straight. Because you can palpate and you can line up the marks all you want, but if they got too much junk in the trunk, it ain't going to line up right. So you want to be able to line head, neck, spine, spine, butt, all in line before you ever start actually lining the patient up. So, we've got all this ballparking going on. That takes a good several minutes. Next, if you don't already have the mask on the patient, put the mask on. You should probably have a three-point setup on the head. Line up to that three-point setup and then double check that you're still straight in line. Once you've got that done, rotate over, set your collimator angle, set your field size, set everything. You are then going to execute your table, um, table angle as determined in the simulation. However much that is. Once you have your table angle set, sorry, you're going to mark the match line. And just for giggles, I'm going to make this. Good. You're going to mark your match line. And as I've talked about with match lines before, you don't want to just try to draw a line on the patient. You want to carefully mark exactly where that field is. So you've got your dots along there. You've got your SSD set. You've got your three-point alignment with your table kick. You're ready to treat. You're going to mark that match line, treat the brain. Then. You're going to mirror your table, mirror your collimator, mirror your, mirror, mirror your gantry to the other side. And you're going to also mark with dots that particular line. And mark as far down as you can on the neck. You want to be able to see as much of that as possible because you're going to be deal dealing with a relatively narrow field on the posterior. So you want to be able to see as much of that divergence as possible because what we're actually determining is we've got a collimator angle here that's going to determine what our match line to our posterior superior field edge is going to be. And that collimator angle, as you can see, the collimator's kicked back this way. This line demonstrates that divergence from the posterior edge. So instead of being straight, you're going to have a field coming in like this that's going to match to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat, rotate over, mirror everything, treat again. We're going to assume that we've already treated the cranium. We're going to go ahead and center our table back up to zero. Turn our collimator back to zero. And we're going to reset our field size to the predetermined field size. Now, what we need to do Move your patient and start off at the CR that's marked on the patient. That can change a little bit. Set your depth. Why do we set our depth right now? We're going to set the proper SSD here at this point. If, and I'll show you exactly what happens if you don't do that. Make our field size where it's supposed to be. Now, I've made my field size proper but I have not made the field width proper. 
come around to this side so you can see this. I've left the field width wider than it should be so that we can see all of this. What we've got here is our dots. We have to align in out to our dots. That's our match line. Now, we may have a gap here. We may not. It depends on your physician. We have taken care of divergence by tilting the collimator to the same angle that this divergence is demonstrating. So we see we have a special, we have a, we have a specific match. So you may not have a gap here. If you don't have a gap, you're golden. You line up in out to this. Ignore this. This could be different. If you line up to this, see your cranium determined, your inferior for your cranium, and the superior to this field. So we've lined up in onto that. Now we're going to re reset our field width. It's about eight. Okay. Now we have our match. If you can see right here, with our field closed down, we can only see two of our dots. We open that field size such that we can see all of this. It's easier to do a match that way. So. Now we have something special we have to do at, the, at this end. We got our depth set, we've got our match line here. Now, we've got another match line that we have to now establish. Mark your match at the inferior border. So we've got our match line, we've got our next match line, and we've got our depth set. Next, treat this. Beep, 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 we've treated it. Now, we're gonna move the patient again. We move in out to about, about that CR. And then set your field size. And you can see when we moved in out with our slope, we're sitting at a different depth. Let's say, for instance, we forgot to set our depth and then we tried to do a match line. Let's say we're going to match directly to this match line. We're not going to, but just for interesting giggles here. Um, we see we're set directly to this. Oh, we were supposed to be at 96. Oh, what happened? Now we've got a difference of over a half a centimeter. We don't want that. We want to have our matches happen at the correct depth. Okay, 96, matching there. Now we're gonna execute our gap. Let's say our gap is one centimeter. We're gonna actually be lined up here. We're gonna do the patient in one centimeter. I recommend using the digital scale on the monitor. You're gonna go in one, so there. Now we've got a one centimeter gap. Double check your SSD. Within one cm, it should be pretty good. So we can determine, we've got our gap set, we've got our depth set, now we can come treat this as well. Now we've treated a craniospinal axis. Start at the head. Every match that you make determines where you set your next field. So you're gonna have your cranium set, match line, set up your Post, superior posterior border, match to that, create your next match line. Move in out, set your inferior posterior border, set your next match line, and execute your gap. That's how you treat one of these. It's not as complicated as simulating, but no sim is simpler than a treatment. But what you have to remember is you've got multiple match lines to deal with so that you have each of those divergent fields matched. You have a gap here because you can't, you can't just kick the table up this way and then kick the table up this way in order to match those two. At depth, as you saw from the diagram in class, those fields are going to cross at some point inside this patient. You cannot avoid that. You want those fields crossing anterior to the spinal cord, not posterior. 
You want that hot spot to be somewhere deep inside the person's body, <coughs> not at the spinal cord. Double treating the spinal cord is bad. We want to avoid that as much as possible. We have, and on one additional video, I will show you how a junction shift works because it's easy to see on a flat, either piece of paper or sheet. That's how you treat a craniospinal axis.